When Joytoy released the Ultramarines Terminators, I was quite happy about having finally in my army. But the action figures were also unmodified direct parts of the old miniatures with their strange proportions. I point especially to the skimpy legs and gorilla-like arms, which were not really my cup of tea. And when the new Dark Angels Terminators were presented, I was quite happy. The new molds were visibly better, with much bigger bodies, thicker legs and overall better proportions. So let's see if they are just as perfect as I hope them to be. We look at both teams in this video, starting from the strike team of the first company of Deathwing Terminators and then moving to the Elite Knight Terminators. Speaking of the formers, they are quite big boxes indeed. A strike master, a champion and an ancient with a company banner. Internal content is pretty much the same, so we will use the captain as our vanguard in the unboxing part. Nothing new about the packaging, which is quite standard for Joytoy releases. The Strike Captain is the only figure with a dual head option, both are very nice. A quite unique large power sword, some additional knives and two alternate hands. Nothing else to assemble, the figure is pretty much there, ready for us to use. The other two Terminators have only helmeted options and their specific loadout. The Champion has a big halberd, a wild standard beer, has also a power fist and a storm bolter. In my case, I will swap the right arms between the Champion and the Ancient. I want a chunky Terminator with Power Fist and Storm Bolter. And the Ancient instead will defend the banner with the Halberd. So keep that in mind during the rest of the video. By default, the Ancient has a simpler Storm Bolter compared to the one used by the Strike Master and also a big Power Fist on the right hand. The standard is made of soft plastic and almost as big as the Terminator himself. Together they need a considerable room to stand upright. The champion instead is our melee only guy with this huge halberd. A quite unique piece that has a lot of details and ornaments worth the Dark Angel's iconography. The Strike Master and the Ancient are also provided with a knife and scabbard. You plug them on the front and can only extract the knife and and wield it in your poses. I won't do that in my case since I am a firm believer in Terminators with huge weapons. I like the leader figures to have an unhelmeted head and the Strike Masters is a really good one. The elbow articulations are quite good despite the big armor plates and the flexible tubes. Legs do not suffer from any problems either. Painting in bone white has some subtle shades but no ink at the rivets. So I just use the Tamiya Palmer liner to make them pop up a bit more. You can see this on the knee and also on the shoulder pauldrons. Overall, the painting job is quite good. I really think this to be the, term the best Terminator so far. Also, the knives can be extracted and handled if you want, but I personally think uh, this to be a bit silly for huge Terminators to go around with knives and of course, this depends on how you are planning to set your display stage. In my case, Terminators mean big and bad weapons. And both the Relic Storm Bolter and the Power Sword are finally made and painted. The Captain is really a badass guy with an impressive look. In addition to the much more impressive and bulkier body, the new Terminators also have an improved shoulder articulation, which is close to what has been used for the Primark figures. Our standard bears, for example, can show that we have a much better lateral raise for arms and also improved posing opportunities. And before I forget, the hip joints are also made of metal alloy, so there is less risk to get loose joints and poses. And this big power fist can also rotate elbow, but also around its main axis too. I will say that even from articulation's point of view, these new terminators are awesome. Finally fully locked and loaded, let's assemble the team for a field review. On the left my champion has become a terminator with power fist and storm bolter. And I like the idea of chunky terminators going around smashing people in the face. The ancient is now wielding the halberd and this seems to me a more fitting weapon for the role. Of course my personal choice, 
and if you're curious I only heated the shoulder joints with an air dryer and then gently pulled off the arms with the joints from the socket. It is quite easy if you want to try by yourself. The result is this big guy relentlessly marching towards the enemy, shrugging off incoming fire and dealing death to the enemies of the Imperium. The paint level is the same for all three strike team components, subtle shades all around that make them really stand out. The Ancient with his Pander is a beast. I had problems making him fit in my normal chef. Overall it is about 25 cm tall, so watch out. Of course you can display it without the banner, but I will say that it loses the 50% shelf presence bonus. The banner itself is very nicely made, it is in soft plastic and with very bright colors. Games Workshop iconography is there and depending on your tastes you may like it or not, but once you put everything together it provides for a welcome variety of colors in the entire team. Overall, these three guys are matching and exceeding all my expectations. If I want to be picky, I would have loved one of them having an assault cannon or a heavy flamer since they are often facing Tyranids. And I would love to put my Deathwing Terminators against a Tyranid Swarm. But at the end of the day, they are Dark Angels and so it is time to meet their Primarch Lionel Johnson. And we can finally appreciate that they are quite big guys. Smaller than the lion is expected, but no midgets on any terms. On the contrary, they seem great candidates for even posing as honor guards without looking like Ewoks near Chewbacca. But to really appreciate their bulk, let's call the master with power fist, and it is like taking kids to the school. And a similar fate happens to the custodians in Alaros Terminator armor and the cow sorcerer in Terminator armor. Ok, this may not be good for many of us, but let's see the good side. We have chunky and big terminators, and let's hope that the scale creep won't go any further for space marines. I won't post them side to side anyway, just to avoid issues. Having seen the terminators in the strike team, it is now time to look at the Deathwing Knights, the best of the best within the first company. A unit where only the most skilled and trust warriors are selected, armed with deadly thunder shields and melee power weapons. We have a try of these ornate terminators so far, so let's look at them starting from one of the knights armed with a mace of absolution. Similar packaging as for the other terminators, but obviously slightly different content. Not much so to make us scream though. At least not until we look at this awesome soft plastic cover simulating a tabard, really nicely shaded with our knight being a very secretive or shy person by the way he hides his face, but it is a green and bone white colors that really stand out here, compared to the other terminators we have seen so far. But let's put him side to side and look at what we have got in terms of equipment. They all have a very similar look, but with many differences in details, in both the armor and equipment. For example, all three of them come with a customized shield with different iconography. Looking at the shield themselves, you can see that there is a back with hard plastic handle, not much more. The front instead is richly decorated with ample use of shading and highlights. It is a quite good presence. The the coolest weapon is the flail used by the Knightmaster with these three independently articulated chain pieces. The chain rings are not independent, so they act more like three separate sticks instead of a proper flail, but I think that it would have been to us too much for three fully articulated chains. The Mace of Absolution is 40k equivalent of a big club to smash enemies from existence. I think that Joytoy has made it a bit smaller than the one used by the miniature, but I can live with that. All three knights have nice hooded face sculpts, at least as far as you can see. No helmets or bare heads are provided. This is in line with that with knights that sacrifice practical and sound head options for the cool factor, and we know that this is the decisive factor on any 40k battlefield. If we take a closer look at our Knight Terminators, we can verify that there is not much difference from other Terminators in terms of overall structure. 
Of course, there are plenty of different aesthetic differences, like the tabard, the hoods, the decorations and so forth, but the base body is the same. And so we have big chunky terminators with an addition of soft plastic clothes. So the articulations are very similar to what we have seen for the strike team, with the obvious limitations for legs due to the tabards, and pauldrons and arms have quite good degree of movements instead. We still have three knife, the knives that can be extracted and, or not, placed at belt level. They are a nice trait that make the Dark Angels more peculiar when compared to the plain aesthetic of the Ultramarine Terminators. Because of the soft plastic hoods, it may be a bit different, difficult to turn the heads, but it is doable with some careful operation. To be honest, I will say that these guys will only look and move forward, leaving the streak of death and destruction in their passage, relying on their Terminator armors and Thunder Shields to ignore most of the incoming fire. No need to look anywhere else. It is difficult for me to pick a favorite Terminator in this release. They all look awesome, but if I'm forced to, I will say that these knights are the priority pickings. They have the most peculiar look and feel, they are big and sturdy, they are nicely decorated with Dark Angel's mystery aura, and they have a very good paint work. Even the plastic tabard adds to the look without sacrificing articulations too much. They are working tanks in shape of sci-fi medieval knights, and their weapons are also a welcome change in the sea of power swords dominating the 40k armies with these joy toy releases. So if you have to pick a set, get just a knight or all of them. The other Deathwing Terminators would have been more appealing with some additional heavy weapon options. Hopefully joy toy will release them in the future and without another scale creep. That is, I can think in my head canon that the Ultramarines and Blood Angels Terminators were first-born Terminators, while these ones are primaris guys in Terminator armors, so some changes have happened to make them bigger. But another scale increase? I don't really know. What I know is that the, what we have here are the best Terminators so far. They are quite pricey, but usually you want to get them during sale events, so if you have space in your shelves, they should be your priority purchase targets. Compared to the Cadians and the Mechanicus figures, plastic stand or not, they really look like demigods among mortals. And I appreciate that. This should be the effect that they make on any shelf. When we add the older Terminators to the mix, like Brother Davinus and Caldor Drago, their size is less imposing, but you can still notice that they are substantially bigger, even if not they are completely out of scale. So the new bodies are quite bulkier than the older releases, but the helmeted heads are also quite smaller than the older releases. You may make a case about how could that unhelmeted head fit inside the small helmet, but it is a matter of taste in my opinion. I am a fan of Space Marines having oversized bodies compared to their heads. But having said that, Having some size variations across the different figures, within reasonable levels of course, uh, it is fine for me, but your mileage may vary. Considering that I pose my figures on separate shelves because I want to keep each faction together, this is a very secondary aspect. The important thing, for me, is that I finally have chunky Terminators that really look gods of the battlefield as they should, and they are a must-have for me. Great painting, no apparent defects and a good variety. Looking forward to more Deathwing releases. Having said that, I wish you a nice rest of the day defending the secrets of the chapter and the Imperium of Man. And why not, liking the video and subscribing to the channel.